Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 31 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So the question is, what modification can you suggest in the hardy clues rule? See, hardy clues rule says that greater the value of the valency of the ions, greater is the power of precipitation. For example, if I take a Cl minus SO4 2 minus and out of these my SO4 2 minus will have more power to coagulate. It talks only about the charge given it is a positive charge so sorry positively collide positively charge collide but for a positive charge collide if you want to coagulate do this negative charge ions so if I use Cl minus and if I use SO4 2 minus SO4 2 minus will have more power. So this law takes into consideration only the power, right? But it doesn't take into consideration the size. The size of ions can also be taken into consideration, right? Then we can say that smaller the size of ion, because the smaller the size, more number of ions will get in a particular milliliter, right? Smaller the size of ion, greater is polarizing power. So this is something which we can add on this Hardy's Clues law, right? So the new rule can be the greater the polarizing power because the polarizing power I'm taking into effect both this factor, the, the charge and the size, greater is the precipitation, correct? The next is why it is essential to wash the precipitate with water before estimating it quantitatively. See, when a substance gets precipitated, for example, I have a solution and in this some of the particles got precipitated. So when it is precipitated, some of the ions in this, because this will get precipitated, some of the ions will get absorbed. Right? Because you can see that this particle, the colloidal particles has a huge tendency to absorb all these ions. Right? So these, these ions will be absorbed. Right, these are all my ions. The red, pink one are my ions, and the blue one is the colloidal particle. So these ions will be absorbed on the surface of this colloidal particle. And if you want to estimate it, it's good to wash it off, right? It's good to remove this red ones. Then you'll get the exact quantity of the colloidal particle. And thus we gently wash the precipitate before estimating it. And the best thing to wash is water, universal solvent. The next is explain what is observed when the beam of light is passed through a colloidal sol. Again, we have seen that this is nothing but Tyndall effect. You will see the path of the light. This is a sol, and you are passing the beam of light here. Maybe a laser light or something. You will see the whole path. The whole path will be visible. Right? That is my Tyndall effect. The next is when an electrolyte NaCl as it is added to hydrated ferric oxide sol. So ferric oxide sol is what? Ferric oxide sol is my positive charge sol. Right? This is positive charge sol. Now in this, if I add NaCl, NaCl is a strong electrolyte, it will give Na plus and Cl minus ion. So this is the positive charge sol. The Cl minus will be adsorbed on this ferric oxide. Correct. So the Cl minus will be adsorbed on this ferric oxide because it is Ferric oxide is a positive charge sol, it will attract the negative charge electrolytes. The second is, third is the electric current is passed through colloidal sol. See, colloidal sol, as I told, is a charge sol always, right? It will absorb some charge. Now, if it is a positive charge sol, let's suppose, and you are passing, uh, applying electric field, then electrophoresis will happen, and this will move towards negative side. If it was negatively charged sol, it would have moved towards positive side. So once it, it touches, or reaches this uh, plate here since this plate has a huge negative potential so this positive charge sol will lose its power right it, it will lose its charge and since this sol is losing losing its charge it will coagulate so at this plate what will happen coagulation will happen so two things will happen first thing is all these uh, particles 
will move towards one of the electrodes depending on the charge if it is positive charge it will all move towards negative electrodes if it is a negative charge sol it will all move towards positive charge pos charge electrode and once it reaches electrode it will lose its charge and coagulate the next statement is comment on the statement that colloid is not a substance but a state of substance yes we have told that when you talk about colloid when you say colloid for example i say uh, nacl in benzene this is a colloid i say milk in water this is a colloid i say oil in water this is a colloid so for a colloid i should have a dispersion phase and dispersion medium right both are required so it is not i i can't say oil is a colloid or i can't say milk is a colloid i can't say water is a colloid oh, sorry nsl is a colloid right so for a colloid you need both dispersion uh, dispersion phase and dispersion medium so we can say that we can say that colloid is not a substance but a state of substance right we say liquid in a liquid colloidal solution in liquid or liquid colloidal solution gas or solid in liquid solid in gas so we had nine sorry eight such combination we have seen right so colloid is not a substance but a state of substance thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again